The following program is paid for by the ministry partners of the Hour of Power and viewers like you. All right, friends, will you hold your hands out like this as a way of receiving? Let's say this together. I'm not what I do. I'm not what I have. I'm not what people say about me. I am the beloved of God. It's who I am. No one can take it from me. I don't have to worry. I don't have to hurry. I can trust my friend Jesus and share his love with the world. Thanks. You can be seated. Today we're finishing the series on Your Best is Yet to Come. We've talked a lot about dreaming big, but we've also talked about paying the price, what it means to walk the narrow road, what it means to, to be training your soul as a, as a, as a disciple, um, what it means to take up your cross for the prize. And today I want to finish with talking about faith, but not just faith in terms of trust, the way we typically talk about it, but faith in operating in the spirit uh, with spiritual authority. That word authority is not a word we Americans like very much, is it? Especially if you're Bobby Shuler, I have always been an anti-authority figure. I remember I had this poor, my poor French teacher in high school. I feel so bad. I was such, I teased her like, when we picked a name, I'm going off the road here, but when we, everybody had to pick a name, you know? My name is Martine, my name is Robert, and I picked Poisson from Little Mermaid. It was the only French word I knew. She's like, well, Poisson means fish. I'm like, that's my name. <laughs> and it was that kind of thing, you know, because she was so dry and she was so authoritarian, and the more she like turned her authority up, the more rebellious I got. And that's how many of us are, right? I mean, like. The, especially as Americans, there is this anti-authority independence thing. So when we talk about exercising authority or submitting to authority, it's something that makes us really uncomfortable. But it is a, a vital part of the kingdom of God. And it is actually at the core of what it means to walk by faith. To walk by faith means that you act in the authority of scripture, in the authority of the covenant that God's given us. And you act with authority over darkness spiritual darkness uh, in our world. So this is a, this is a little bit of a, a deeper message today, and I hope you, you stick with me because I think it'll change your life. You have authority. You have spiritual authority uh, in, in your, the range of your effective will, that is the, the, your life and your kingdom, to pray, to act with boldness and power. Recently, um, my friend Ed Stetzer, he's an editor for Christianity Today, and he's the executive chairman for the Billy Graham Foundation, he tweeted this out. Through my back out, x-rays and treatment on Friday and too many drugs since then, now asking for prayer. Not the weak, Lord, if it be thy will, heal Ed's back. Prayer, nope, I'm looking for the God! We're believing you to heal Ed's back! Spirit-filled kind. Please, now. Now, here's the thing. As Christians, when we are when we are backed into a corner, we all feel that way. Why? When, when we have no place else to go, we don't want the guy who's gonna be, oh Lord on high, blessed be thy name. I pray to thee on behalf of mine beloved brother, Chad. You know? You don't want none of us, you know, if it's like, you know, praying over your wedding or something, fine. But if you really, you know, you know, like it's something ceremonial. But if you, if it matters, weddings matter. <laughs> if it's, you know, if it's like something, you know, like I'm gonna die unless I get healed, you don't want that guy, you know, the holy hand grenade of Antioch guy praying over you. You want someone like that. You want someone who, who, as Jesus said, is gonna be banging on his neighbor's door. You want the woman who, who goes before the unjust judge and pleads. You want someone who prays with passion, with power, and with authority. Why do we want someone like that in our lives, but we don't want to be that way ourselves? I remember when we lived in, in Tulsa, we went to a church for a long time, and we had something like that where a member of our family got sick, 
And we were like, well, we need to take her to the church and, and pray. And my mom was like, no, we're not going to our church to pray. We're going to Victory, a charismatic church. They know how to pray. They pray like that. We need someone who prays like that. We shouldn't be timid about our faith. We shouldn't be timid about the kingdom of God. We shouldn't be timid about God's promises. We should be bold. Be bold, be strong, right? God has not given you a spirit of fear, but he's given unto us what? A spirit of what? Power and of love. And he's given us a sound mind. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be timid. We need to know God's word. We need to hear his voice and we need to live and operate in spiritual authority. This is important. And this is so very often what Jesus is trying to teach his disciples, to act in that authority. This is what he's trying to teach us too. In scripture, and look again, authority, right? Spiritual authority. In the scripture, that word authority, rule, sovereignty, it's in right from the beginning, all through the pages of the Bible. You see this movement of spiritual authority, victories and losses, and it begins by God administering his authority to Adam and Eve. God created mankind, I'm reading this from the scriptures in Genesis chapter one. So God created mankind in whose image? God's image, right? God's power, God's life, God's joy. In, the, in his own image, the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and what? Subdue it. And then what? Rule over. Rule over it. The fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and over every living creature that moves on the ground. And then later in chapter two, he says, the Lord took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to do what? To work it and to what? And to care for it. So you see that God gives Adam and Eve, what? Authority to rule. To, to rule, right, with power, with God's authority over his creation, to co-create, probably to make new things, to be fruitful, to multiply, why? So they, for their ego? No, right? For the benefit of creation. God, create, God gave Adam and Eve authority over creation for the benefit of creation. This is why we have spiritual authority. It's not for our benefit. It's for the benefit of others. It's for the benefit of creation. We need to take spiritual authority uh, uh, in a very spiritually dark world for the benefit of others. That power, that authority that was given to Adam and Eve, they willfully gave that over to the serpent in the garden when they sinned. And, that, and death reigned from then uh, until Christ. And this is what Paul says. In Romans 5, he's talking about this, and it's, of course, all over the New Testament, but it says, nevertheless, death what? What's the word there? Reigned. Death had authority. Death had power. Death, death was on the throne, right? From the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking a command as Adam did, who is a pattern of the one to come. But the gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died by the trespass of the one man, that's talking about the fall, right, because of Adam's sin, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to many? Paul is talking about Jesus, the new Adam. That that authority that was taken from Adam and, and, or the, uh, that Adam gave over to the serpent, Jesus took it back and he gave it to us. We operate under the, when we operate in Jesus' name, we operate in his authority. And it's interesting, if you look for it, when you read the Gospels, you just see over and over how much Jesus is trying to teach this idea of authority, spiritual authority, of, of the authority of good over evil um, to his disciples and wanting them to live by faith in that authority. Great example of that is the story of the centurion. Remember the centurion? Comes to Jesus. His servant is sick. And he says, Lord, my servant is paralyzed. I, I need you to heal him. And Jesus says, take me to him. And he says, I, I'm not worthy to have you under my roof. Keep in mind, this is not a Jewish man. This is not a Christian man. It's a pagan, okay? I'm not worthy to have you under my roof. He's a centurion. It's like a colonel. And he says to Jesus, I am a man of what? You remember the word? Authority. I am a man of authority. I tell this, and I have men under me, and I am under others. I tell this one, go, and he goes. And I tell this one, come, and he comes. I tell this servant, do it, and he does it. 
You don't need to come to my house. He says to Jesus, just simply say the word and it will be so. And you remember what Jesus says? Greater faith. I've never seen greater faith in all of Israel than this man. What does that say? So much of faith is about understanding authority over darkness. You have authority. Pray like it. Act like it. Think like it. Train your mind and your spirit according to God's word to move in power. Uh, and this, of course, is when I wanted to read Matthew 17. Um, so, by the way, you guys know my son has epilepsy. And I just want to say, this, this scripture, you know, it's not, it's not saying that people have ep epilepsy or demon-possessed, but rather that this boy was suffering from seizures because Satan had authority over his life. So Jesus has been trying to teach his disciples to work in authority, to operate in authority according to him and according to the kingdom of God. And it says, Matthew 17, 14, when, when they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. And the Greek says that Jesus literally went, ah, ah. It's right there. Right there in the Greek. He says, you, now when he's talking, he's not talking to the man, he's talking to his students. You unbelieving and perverse generation. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of the boy and he was healed at that moment. Then the disciples came to Jesus, what, in public? You know, because they're embarrassed, in private. And they asked, um, <laughs> why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, because you have so little faith. First of all, I, this, this verse is sort of about healing, but it's not. It's really about spiritual authority, isn't it? Having, having authority over the demonic, having authority over evil, to remove it. He said, truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there. Notice how you can say to this mountain, Lord, I pray that you move this mountain. Lord, I just ask if it be your will. I don't mean to mock you, but look, he says, just say, you just say to it, move, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible. For you. If we have faith, Jesus says nothing will be impossible to us. This is the word of God. It's either true or it isn't. It's either true or it isn't. We must become the kinds of people who understand that we live in a physical world influenced by spiritual things and we have spiritual authority. God wants to work in your life. You may be scared, you may be timid, you may be pinned in a corner. Stop looking for someone to pray for you like this and start praying this way yourself. Act in spiritual authority today. Stop waiting. Believe the word of God. Act according to it. Command. He's given you the authority to do it. And learn to hear the voice of the shepherd. This is a piece that is also so important. As we train and study the scriptures and pray and spend time in the spirit, we begin to hear clearly God's voice. And when we do, and we hear God's voice clearly, it becomes easier to operate in authority because we know what he said. When we study scriptures and memorize them, we begin to, to bring it into our bones. We know what it says, and we begin to act with faith. 
better than guessing. You don't have to guess. It's right here. When the Bible is read, God's voice is heard. When the Bible is read aloud, God's voice is heard audibly. Believe it. So, who wants to live this way? I know I do. Here's some things we can do. The first and the most important thing, and you're gonna hate what I'm about to say. It's not gonna be the last thing you're gonna hate what I'm gonna say today, by the way. <laughs> the first thing is you gotta learn to live under authority yourself. The centurion man, what did he say? I have men under my authority, but what else? I myself am also under authority. The centurion didn't have authority because he was so tough. He had authority because he knelt to Caesar. We have authority because we kneel before the throne of God. If we are not submitted to the authority of, of the kingdom of God in our lives, we don't have authority around us. It doesn't mean that you have to be perfect. We live by grace, right? But we still should strive humbly in light of God's grace uh, to live holy lives and to do our best. We should not blatantly live in iniquity, constantly pretending like everything's fine. We should really desire to be under God's authority. Um, it's kind of like that Bob Dylan song, you're gonna have to serve somebody. Anybody you know? <laughs> Look, you're, you're under authority whether you know it or not. It, it may be the devil, or it may be the Lord. But you know you gotta serve somebody. That doesn't sound like Bob Dylan. But he was right, man. Actually, that was Bob Dylan. He was a believer. I, I think he was a believer when he did that, wasn't he? I think he'd just gotten saved. Anyway, uh, it's kind of like this. It's like sometimes we think, oh, I've, I've sinned and I've made a mistake and, and now God's blessing has been removed from me. But I think it, so we think it just kind of goes away. But I, I think a big part of this is almost like an ATM card. Have you ever been traveling internationally and you lose your ATM card? You have a bank maybe with some money in it but you lost your card, you lost access to that money. It's not that the money got wiped away or stolen or disappeared, you just can't access it. And I think that's what happens when we're living, when we, are, when we are living in rebellion against God, when God is pressing something on our heart to change and we, we refuse and we continue to walk in rebellion towards what we know is right in our lives, we begin, it's like losing that ATM card. God's not gonna like take all your cash in that scenario, but, but you are gonna lose access to it. So get your card back, okay? And then living under authority, I don't mean just under authority to God. I also mean that you need, you need incarnational representations of that in your life as well. I am not a good enough person to keep myself accountable. I need people in my life to hold me accountable. So do you. We need, that's why one of the first things I did when, when we came to lead this church was insist that we have a real board, not a rubber stamp board, a real board of six men and women who love the Lord that can fire, they can fire me anytime, anytime they want. And, and the decisions I make on behalf of this church are scrutinized by that board. And of course, we're all friends. We love each other very much. But, there, but there's that, that system is there to keep me and to keep our team honest and to submit to that team. And I, I also have, a men, I have multiple mentors, but one in particular, Bill Galtier, that, who keeps me accountable and asks me, how are you doing? Are you working too hard? Are you putting your family first? Is there sin in your life? Are you seeking God with all your heart? Submitting to authority, you know, finding people that you submit to willingly, that you want to speak to, gives you authority. The, the authority you have is from on high. So if we, when we submit to that authority, we gain authority as well. Does that make sense? So do that, it'll be good for you, all right? Pray bigger. No more weakling prayers. Pray, and when you pray, mean it. Pray with faith, pray with confidence. Be the kind of person you want to pray for you, and pray that way every day with authority, with power, with faith, belief. I remember, <laughs> now this is not a suggestion, but I remember, I've told you guys recently, not long ago, this one of the first miracles I ever saw in Thailand. I was 15 years old. I actually turned 16 while I was there. And there was a girl who was the leader of our little group. Her name was Becky. She was 18. And you have to understand, when I'm 15, that sounds really old. An 18-year-old is an adult. She can vote. She can be in the military. She, this is a big deal. And uh, 
Anyway, so she was kind of our spiritual leader of the, of the group. But looking back as an, as an adult, I'm like, she was still a child. And what's amazing about this story is we were, we were sharing our faith in this market with a man who had never walked before. And he was there, I think, either with his father or uncle or something. And he had walked, but he hadn't walked for 10 years. He had some injury, and he was unable, so he would drag himself around this room. Anyway, um, she looks at him as we're witnessing, and she says, we're about to pray for you, and God is gonna heal you. And if God doesn't heal you, there is no God, and his word is not true. And I was like, what? <laughs> so I'm not suggesting you pray this way, but I was like, what are you saying? And then she goes to lay, and then like, it's like, it's like there's nobody, it's like nobody in this room except her and this guy. And she goes to lay hands on him, and she said, dear God, and she begins to pray. That's when she's healed. He doesn't finish. It's like the second she touches him, he like stands up, says something in Thai, and like freaks out and starts running and disappears. And like this guy, his dad or whoever, he starts talking this all through translator. We can't understand it. But like that kind of a prayer, don't ever pray that way, by the way. But there's something <laughs> admirable about that, isn't there? The boldness. Now, I, be I actually believe this was someone who, Becky, her name was Becky. She was so, so radically, like, so sold out for the Lord. Her whole life was the Lord. I just believe she heard that. I just, I, I think that God wanted her to say that because the Lord wanted that miracle to be a testimony to that man um, that, that Easter really happened. God is sovereign. He doesn't always do everything we want. He's in control. He is sovereign. You just don't, you don't have to remind him. He knows. You don't have to say, God, you're sovereign before you pray. He knows. Command things when you pray. You remember when, when Peter raised the, the man who was at the gate uh, called Beautiful in Acts chapter three? Remember how he prayed for that man? Silver and gold have I not. Rise up and walk. He just commanded it. He just said, rise up and walk. That's how Jesus healed people. Walk, see, be God, be healed. I, I feel like in spirit, we're missing that bit in the way we pray. That's how the Lord wants us to pray. And when you pray for people, that's how they want you to pray for them too, by the way. Amen? Okay, so pray bigger. Believe the word of God, it's true. Um, number three, act bigger. When you know you're supposed to do something on behalf of the Lord, whatever it is, don't do it half-baked. Just do it 100% or just don't do it. And if you're, if you're timid, if you're afraid, it's a great opportunity to grow in that aspect of your life. Here's another thing you guys are gonna hate. If you don't have the courage or the heart to do it in a big way, just fake it. Fake it. Just fake it. This is cognitive behavioral therapy. They teach people who struggle with anxiety, depression, to fake it till they make it. So you, you act as though the scriptures are true. Act as though it's from the Lord. And uh, that will train you to be braver. Maybe you're going something in your life and you know you have to do something you don't want to do. Um, do it. And do it 100%. And that's my last thing. That's a reminder of this whole series. And that is give big. Give really big. And when I say give, I'm not talking about donations, although for some of you that might be exactly what it is. When I mean give bigger, I mean give it a hundred, give it a thousand percent. Jesus wants it all. He wants everything. He wants your whole heart. Pour yourself completely into what, whatever it is you're doing. The cross itself is the greatest symbol of generosity ever. It's, it was a gift, the greatest gift ever given. And so to take up our cross and follow Christ means that there's a sacrifice that's a blessing to others. So take up your cross, follow him, pay the price, go the extra mile, do what you need to do um, to go all the way on the narrow road. And I promise you, if you do that, give, give yourself grace, give yourself mercy, don't be hard on yourself, no shame, don't beat yourself up, you're doing better than you think, but keep going. Do bigger, pray bigger, and believe and operate in spiritual authority. If you have depression, anxiety, if you have fear, just take authority over that stuff. And if you have people in your life who, who are suffering, when you pray for them, pray with authority. 
And, uh, and watch as you see that, that, that the Holy Spirit works through those moments and you begin to see the Lord even doing miracles in your life. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. Lord, we love you. And we thank you that you've given us authority. That as we live every moment in the kingdom of God, as we live according to your word, as we walk in the spirit, we thank you, Lord, that we can do everything that you've called us to do. So we pray that you give us faith. We love you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hannah and I are so happy you've joined us in worship today. We hope that you have found incredible hope and inspiration from our program. Here at Shepherd's Grove and Hour of Power, we truly believe that we are better together. Regardless of where on this earth God has planted us, in Him we are a family. Bobby and I want you to know that we are so grateful for your generosity to our ministry. But it's not just our ministry, it's your ministry. And none of this would be possible without you. Because of you, people all around the world are being reached with the gospel every single week, and their lives are being changed forever. As we enter into another year of His goodness, we pray that you also know that you are part of God's family. You are a beloved child of God united by His Spirit with brothers and sisters in every nation of the world. That's right. We want you to know that you're never alone, no matter what you're facing. God has the whole world in His hands. He loves you, and so do we. Today, Bobby and Hannah would love to send you this 2019 Hope Around the World wall calendar. Each month features a beautiful photo from the United States or a country where an Hour of Power office is located, like Canada, Hong Kong, Australia, New Zealand, the Netherlands, or Germany. Your calendar also includes monthly scriptures and inspiration, as well as powerful testimonies from members of both our national and international Hour of Power family. Large boxes for each day of the month, perfect for writing in appointments and events or the names of loved ones you want to pray for. Each day also includes a daily scripture reading to help you read through your Bible in one year. We want this 12-month calendar to remind you of how truly loved you are and how much we honor your partnership with this ministry. And with your gift of support today, we'll also include Bobby's brand new message series, Your Best is Yet to Come, on four CDs with our thanks. Or with a generous gift of $130 or more, you'll also receive a beautiful custom art display proclaiming your hope in Jesus. As we approach the year end, you're invited to make a special investment in the precious Word of God. With your special year-end gift of $1,000 or more, you'll also receive a very special leather-bound comparative study Bible that will take you deeper in God's Word. Call, write, or go online today and request your 2019 Hope Around the World wall calendar and four CD series, Your Best is Yet to Come. We're asking for a generous gift of any size. The preceding program was paid for by the ministry partners of the Hour of Power and viewers like you and is accredited by the Evangelical Council for Financial Accountability.